Well, welcome back to our Ray's Arithmetic course. We are doing lesson number 46 in the primary book, the Ray's New Primary Arithmetic book. Lesson 46. We're going to be doing multiplication with the number 8. Last time we did multiplication with the number 7. Today we're going to do it with the number 8. And so we're going to be looking at the multiplication facts for the number 8 and the story problems that are going to give us some practice with multiplying in the number 8. So what I want to do to start with is let me just say the multiplication facts for the number 8 out loud, and I'll go through them once, and then I'll go back over through them, and I'll put them here on the board. So if you're ready, you listen closely to these, because we're going to be memorizing them and then putting them into practice. So here are the multiplication facts we're going to learn for the number 8. The first one is 8 times 1 are 8. And the next one is 2 times 8 are 16. And then 8 times 2 are 16. 3 times 8 are 24. 8 times 3 are 24. 4 times 8 are 32. 8 times 4 are 32. 5 times 8 are 40. 8 times 5 are 40. 6 times 8 are 48. 8 times 6 are 48. 7 times 8 are 56. 8 times 7 are 56. 8 times 8 are 64. 8 times 9 are 72. 9 times 8 are 72. 8 times 10 are 80. And 10 times 8 are 80. So those are the multiplication facts for 8. Now let's go, ahead and go back and put these on the board. And I'll read through these as we, or rather we can read the, through these as I put them on the board. So the first one was 8 times 1 are 8. So it's going to look like this. 8 times 1 are 8. Do that one again. Okay, let me divide our board a little bit. Okay, so the next one is 2 times 8 are 16. 2 times 8 are 16. And then we switch the 8 and the 2, and we have 8 times 2. And that's also 16. 8 times 2 are 16, and then 3 times 8 are, you know what that is? 24. And then 8 times 3, you know what that is? Well, that's going to be 24. Okay, then we do 4 times 8. 4 times 8 are 32. And 8 times 4, that's also 32. And then 5 times 8. How many are 5 times 8? 40. And 8 times 5, how many do you think that is? That's 40. And how about 6 times 8? 6 times 8 are 48. And 8 times 6, how many are 8 times 6? That's 48. Okay, let's continue and finish up these multiplication facts. What's the next one? Is it 7 times 8? Yeah. 7 times 8 are 56. And 8 times 7, also 56. How about 8 times 8? you know how many that is? 8 times 8 are 64. And what's next? 8 times 9? How many are 8 times 9? 72, and 9 times 8, that's also 72. How many are 8 times 10? 8 times 10 are 80. And 10 times 8 are 80. Okay, now, as we look at these, the first number is the multiplier. That's telling us 8 times something, 2 times something, 8 times something. And the second number is the number that we're multiplying that many times. So let's say in this first one, the 8 times 1 or 8, that's saying that 8 times 1, okay, let's say you had 8 marbles. What you're doing there is you got one marble multiplied 8 times. So that's 8 marbles altogether. So 1 is being multiplied 8 times, so that gives you 8 marbles. What if you had two groups of marbles and they each had 8 marbles in the group? So you're multiplying 8 two times. So in multiplication language, that's 2 times 8 are 16. And the same thing if you had 8 groups of 2. 
let's see, you have, you have eight pairs of marbles. Well, those eight pairs of marbles adds up to 16. What you're doing really is multiplying two eight times. So in multiplication language, it's eight times two, or 16. Uh, the next one is three times eight or 24. Well, three is our multiply here because we're saying three times eight, which means, uh, let's say we have three groups of eight marbles. That's 24. That's eight being multiplied three times. And if you picture those eight marbles rearranged so that you have eight groups of three, well, you've got three multiplying eight times. Okay. Well, uh, the rest of them work the same way. Let's jump ahead to, let's say, this last one. What this means is if you have 10 groups of marbles and each group has 8 marbles in it, you've got a total of 80 marbles altogether. And that means you've got 8 marbles being multiplied 10 times because you've got, you've got 10 groups. So that's how multiplication works for each one of these numbers. I think you'll get the hang of it as you work with multiplication more. Well, to give us a little practice with the number 8 and multiplying, let's look at some story problems. In the first one, we've got a boy named James who goes to the store and he goes to the fruit section of the grocery store and he buys two melons. Now, the melons cost eight cents each. So if he wants to buy two melons, how much does James have to pay for the two melons? Hmm, what two numbers are we gonna multiply to find out the answer to that? Well, he's buying two melons and they cost eight cents each. So that's pretty simple. That means we're gonna multiply two times eight, right? And what are 2 times 8? Well, in our, our multiplication facts, we learned 2 times 8 or 16. So James is going to pay 16 cents for his two marbles, marbles, his two melons. Okay, in our next problem, we've got a couple of boys fishing. In fact, we've got three boys fishing, and they each catch eight fish. Somehow, they each one each manages to catch the same number of fish as the other. Well, each of the three boys catches eight fish. So I wonder how many fish they all caught. At the end of the day, when they went home, how many fish did they all have, the three boys? So what two numbers do you think we'd multiply to find out? Well, we'd multiply three times eight, wouldn't we? Because we got three boys, and each boy caught eight fish. So how many fish is that all together? That's three times eight fish. So three times eight or what? 24. So 24 fish. OK, I guess they had a good fish dinner when they got home. Now in the next problem, Nancy has four hens, and then each hen has got eight chickens. So how many chickens are there in the whole batch, in that whole chicken coop? She's got four hens, and each hen has eight chickens. So what two numbers are we going to multiply to find out how many chickens Nancy has all together? Well, it's going to be four times eight, because there are four hens, and each hen has eight chickens. So how many chickens is that all together? It's four times eight, which are... How many? 4 times 8 are 32. Now in our next problem, we're walking down the street and we pass five houses as we're walking. We notice, you know what, all five houses have the same number of windows in them. We count eight windows in each of those five houses. Hmm, I wonder how many windows are in all of those houses we just walked past. Well, let's do a little multiplication and find out. Well, what two numbers are we going to multiply to find out how many houses or how many windows these five houses have? Well, each, win each uh, house has eight windows, and we get five houses. I wonder what two numbers we're going to multiply to find out the answer. Well, sounds to me like it's going to be five times eight. What do you think? Five houses. Each house has eight windows. So how many windows is that all together? Five times eight are, you're right, 40 windows. Five times eight are 40 windows. All right. Well, in our next problem, it's a measuring problem. We're going to talk about pints and gallons. And with, if you practice a little bit or learn a little something about measuring liquids, like, I don't know, water, milk, juice, things like that, we talk about pints and gallons. Those are two of several measures that we use when we talk about liquids, pouring stuff into a bottle or whatever. Well, there are eight pints in one gallon. So if there are eight pints in one gallon, how many pints would there be in six gallons? Hmm. Even if you don't know much about pints and gallons, I think we can still figure out the number of pints in the gallons. Eight pints in one gallon, how many pints are in six gallons? As long as we know multiplication, we can find out the answer. Well, what two numbers are we going to multiply to find out this problem? Well, eight 
times 6. Let's see. No, actually, you know what? It's going to be 6 times 8 because we, we want to know how many pints are in 6 gallons. So 6 is kind of our multiplier. We're going to go 6 times 8 pints because there are 8 pints in 1 gallon. So we, we want to know how many pints are in 6 gallons. So we're multiplying 6 times 8. In other words, 8 6 times. So what is that going to be? 6 times 8 are 48. So that means there are 48 pints in 6 gallons. How about that? Okay, we'll, look, we'll work more with liquid measure in another lesson, but for now, hey, we just learned that 6 times 8 are 48. Okay, now in our next lesson, back to something a little bit more familiar. Apples. If one dozen apples cost 9 cents, how many cents would 8 dozen apples cost? Okay, what are we going to multiply to find out how many cents 8 dozen apples would cost if 1 dozen cost 9 cents? Um, probably 8 times 9. The reason we're going to multiply 8 times 9 is because 1 dozen eggs cost 9 cents. We want to know how many cents 8 dozen apples cost. So 8 is kind of our multiplier. 8 times 9 cents. How many is 8 times 9? 72. So those 8 dozen apples cost us 72 cents because 8 times 9 are 72. Okay, one more problem to wrap things up today. Uh, we need a new comb. I guess I lost my comb. I went to borrow yours, but you don't have one either, so i got to go to the store and buy a comb. Well, the price of a comb is 10 cents. So, But I want to stock up on combs. I want to make sure I'm never going to lose a comb again, or if I do, I have one to back me up, and I can don't have to do without. So I'm going to buy eight combs. I'm going to buy eight combs, and each comb costs 10 cents. So how many cents would I be paying? How much will those eight combs cost? Each one costs 10 cents. Well, what two numbers are we going to multiply to find out how much money I have to pay? I think it's going to be 8 times 10 because each comb costs 10 cents and I'm buying 8 combs. So we're doing 8 times 10. 10 cents is being multiplied 8 times. So what is 8 times 10? 8 times 10 is 80. So that means I've got to pay 80 cents to buy those 10 combs, or rather 8 combs, at 10 cents apiece. Well, that will do it for our lesson today. That was lesson 46. Next time we get together, we're going to do multiplication with the number 9. And that'll be from our book lesson 47, how to raise primary arithmetic. Okay, we'll see you next time. If you want some great ideas on homeschool solutions and more information about raise math, raise arithmetic, you can go to raisearithmetic.wordpress.com.